as mentioned, there's a lot of data suggesting that using supplements uh, or NAD precursors, one can replenish NAD. But also, as mentioned, these supplements have are not drugs, basically. They don't have drug-like properties. At, we heard some of them times that they're not what you think they are in terms of purity. They have very short um, uh, metabolic half-lives, unclear distributions. And so we were more interested in, well, we were interested in trying to uh, use what's known about NAD metabolism to develop real sort of pharmacological agents that manipulated NAD levels. And so, as uh, I mentioned earlier today, there are a number of NAD metabolism is very confusing and complex, but we focus on the salvage pathway, which I think many people feel is, is one of the major drivers of intracellular NAD metabolism. And within the salvage pa pathway, the enzyme NAMPT is thought to be the rate limiting step for NAD metabolism. And so what we were interested to do is, could we develop a small molecule that serves, that binds the NAMPT and activates, it uh, increases its enzymatic activity. Now, as you know, getting a small molecule to bind an inhibitor enzyme is relatively straightforward, but getting a small molecule that increases activity is, is much more difficult task. How, so to accomplish this, what we did is leverage this technology that we've been de developing again with my colleagues Bill and Ewan over the last four or five years, which is a screening platform that allows us to identify small molecule interactions with a protein of interest. And this technology is very novel and unique, but I think for the purposes of this talk, the technology that comes closest to it is a technology or a methodology known as SETSA or cellular uh, thermal shift analysis. And what SETSA does um, is uh, if you take any protein of interest and you heat it, that protein will denature uh, what's known as its melt curve. So it will go from a native configuration to a denatured configuration. And if you do that same experiment, same manipulation in the presence of a small molecule that can bind to the protein of interest, then it stabilizes that native configuration. And thereby, when you now heat it, the temperature at which it denatures, the melt curve, shifts to the right. And by, by the amount, by measuring that shift and the level of that shift, one can determine the affinity or can define an affinity of that ligand for, this, for that protein of interest. And so that we have sort of leveraged that concept and come up with our new, uh, a newer version of this that allows us to do this uh, shift in a sort of high throughput fashion. And so we can screen, and we have screened roughly 30 or so proteins of interest um, using this approach, and we can screen 20 to 30,000 compounds a day in, in our sort of full, fully automated setup. And that has given us uh, hope that we can go after a lot of previously hard to drug or undruggable targets. But in this case, uh, the example I want to show you is using NAMPT as a protein of interest and using this screening platform to basically identify small molecules that bind to NAMPT. And, and so here's an example where we screen 100,000 compounds uh, of our in-house library, a, a diversity library that we have in-house. Um, and using this library of 100,000 compounds, we were able to, to identify roughly 300 or so molecules that appear to bind to NAMPT with a reasonable high affinity. Now, the majority of these compounds either had no effect on NAMPT activity or acted as inhibitors. But about five of these molecules acted as NAMPT activators. And, and some of the evidence to show that they do so is shown here, where we take three of these hit molecules and add increasing amounts of them to a, to a cell and show that, as you see in blue, that the level of NAD rises in these cells. Um, and if we take a cell line, the same cell line and knock out NAMPT, then these compounds are without effect. So we believe, based on this and other evidence, that these small molecules bind and increase NAMPT activity in cells. Now this is on tumor cells. What about normal, more physiological cells? And so the same effects we see using these hit compounds on things like iPSC-derived neurons. Now the effects are not huge. Uh, these are hit molecules. We've uh, done a significant amount of chemistry to improve their potency and efficacy. But, but even in, at this sort of hit stage, we think that this level of increase of NAD may be therapeutic 
because in, in collaboration with a co my colleague Stacy Rizzo, we've measured NAD, and, and as many of you have observed, that the level of decline with age or with age and disease is in the order of around 30 to 50 percent. And we're able to sort of reverse that with these small molecules. And so we're very, uh, we're hopeful and we obviously have a lot to do, but we're very encouraged by the fact that we can get small molecules that act that bind an MPT, increase NAD, and these are, have true uh, good ADME sort of properties, very high brain penetration in one case, and so we're, we're in the process of, of advancing these molecules um, uh, along.